Is there a real Leonard Skinner, or did I, did I hear that name wrong? Well, those kinds of questions they've been asked over the decades about Jacksonville's famous rock band. Many fans know the story that two of the founding members were sent to the principal's office at Lee High School in Jacksonville and ended up naming their band after the coach who disciplined them. Well, memory lane is a bittersweet notion for the family of Leonard Skinner, the coach who lost his life to Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> The band known for Sweet Home Alabama had other big hits too, and so this simple man, he was there at the beginning, way back in the day in Jacksonville in the late 60s. So uh, my dad was a, a coach at Lee High School. Um, the encounter with Ronnie Van Zant and Gary Rosington happened there at the school. Unbeknownst to us, he sent two kids to the office for having l hair that was beyond the dress code. Susie Skinner Moore showed us photos and talked about the connection for her dad, Leonard Skinner, and this famous band. At a seventh grade dance for her at Jeb Stewart Junior High, the hot young band performed and shocked Susie for a couple reasons. And I thought I was so amazed. I will never forget the, the signs that they made advertising the band because they had Leonard Skinner spelled just like my dad's name on there, and I thought, wow, there, somebody else has the same name as my dad. That didn't last too long. Susie says Rolling Stones did an interview with Ronnie Van Zant, and the cat was out of the bag. And someone in our circle of friends heard the interview and called my dad and said, hey, did you know you have a rock band named after you? Leonard Skinner moved on from coaching and became a real estate broker on the corner of Osceola Street and Riverside Avenue. But that was the first sign, if you will, of trouble. And uh, he had signs made Leonard Skinner Realty. And people would steal his signs. Like, <laughs> yes, they did. They stole them right out of the yards. When the band's second album came out, it had a photo of the real estate sign on the inside quarter with the office phone number instant inconvenience. One night at like 4 a.m., his business phone rang. He picked it up, Leonard Skinner Realty, and he could hear this music in the background. And then all he heard was somebody went far out. <laughs> so he says, why are you calling me? He says, I just wanted to see if you were real. Mom, hang up the phone. So we had a lot of incidents like that. The fun stories are great memories for Susie and her mom, Rosemary. The band eventually changed the spelling of its name to something so it sounds like, but is not really, Leonard Skinner. Well, uh, we sort of, for a while, kind of wish they had kept it like my husband's name so that maybe we could get some of that money they made. But, you know, they, they were smart. <laughs> they got a lawyer. What Leonard got was a lifetime of a connection to a pop culture icon. And for Rosemary and Susie, well, that's where the other shoe begins to drop. When Skinner was ready to enjoy the sunset years of his life, Alzheimer's disease robbed him and them of the love of their life. One of the things that was the most heartbreaking for me was the fact that he was not able to follow a sports game anymore. Because, listen, this man loved his sport. I mean, he was a coach. He loved sports. I didn't plan to get old on my own. I didn't plan to have arthritis and not have anybody to rub my back or hug me or kiss me and make me feel better because this is an insidious disease and it takes people away from you just a little bit at a time. It's not like they fall down and they're hurt or break a bone or something like that. This is just a little tiny something that you notice. His wife and daughter you met there say that Leonard Skinner passed away about five years after his diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. They both told me that they're passionate about supporting the Alzheimer's Association and that they will participate in the walk to end Alzheimer's in Jacksonville, which is coming up November 16th. And tomorrow on News for Jacks, anchor and reporter Tom Wills returns to Mississippi for the first time since he went there 42 years ago to the scene of the Leonard Skinner band's plane crash. 
Uh, news for Jax at 5, the painful, emotional scars that still have not healed for Judy Van Zandt, Ronnie Van Zandt's widow, and Karina Gaines, daughter of Steve Gaines. Then tomorrow on the 10 o'clock news, Tom returns to the woods where the plane went down. He goes with one of the local residents who took part in the heroic rescue effort that night more than four decades ago. You don't want to miss Tom's special coming home. It's tomorrow at 5 and at 10 p.m.